Hi guys, fellas. I'm waiting for you guys to tune in. Back from vacation. And now, waiting two, three minutes until you're online. In case you're not gonna make it online, I'm gonna upload this video on YouTube, on my IGTV too. And I'm still looking forward, very much forward on interacting with you. Some lads that I have to drop them off because you guys were insulting me all the times. I couldn't handle that. Hi, Lord of the Fan. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Amik. Waiting for a few more. I know that a lot of you are in vacation. I've been in vacation myself too. And still, I'm back and happy to be back and to move on with a lot of positive projects and with one mission and goal and it's the goal of growing this industry and I had this idea of doing this live stream because there's gonna be probably this week another live streaming on Thursday with a very interesting personality I'm gonna announce that tomorrow uh, in the afternoon and uh, the idea here came up after a few dis discussions thank you Lord of the Fan so the idea of doing this live streaming came pretty much you know very um, naturally naturally in the sense that I had some discussions on social media not too harsh but like where I got uh, somehow criticized for my way of viewing at some actions that some retailers are doing in order to sell pens in a very difficult time where I criticized selling products in a certain way and we're gonna discuss all of this all together I see we're seven already so another minute guys and I'm gonna start and don't forget this is an interaction so I want you to write there and I'm gonna read and I'm gonna surely answer today I'm alone I don't have anyone tuning in and you can also like uh, here place your questions there and you can place your questions there and uh, so I can answer them so I see Otohut is online. I'm happy that some brands and manufacturers are online too. I hope that you'll stay online, guys, and I hope more, more will join uh, in the meantime. Now, I'm gonna start by saying that indeed this year has been a very challenging one, and it has been a year of great changes. It has been a year of very strange moments. It has been a year where some of us lost some of our dear ones because of this uh, problem called COVID. And in all of this, it has also been a moment of self-reflection, at least for me, but not only for me, because I've heard a lot of people, friends, customer, who told me that they used this period as a self-reflection time. Therefore, uh, it was interesting that they told me that they use their pen a lot while they may, might not have been using their suits or their watches because they've been home, but they've been using their fountain pen or their nice uh, pen to write them totes. And during this period, I had the time finally to have, you know, my store was closed, we were renovating, uh, customers were not asking for anything, no one was coming in the store because the store was closed because of the lockdown. And it gave me the opportunity to get some inspiration and self-reflect about the industry of writing instruments that we have been in it since around 10 years. I had the luck of being in this industry as a retailer, as a distributor, because my parents started with distributing Italian and Japanese brands in Switzerland. Very difficult job to do because Switzerland is a small country and I also had the chance to, and we, we still have the chance to own Edelberg, our brand, which has been distributed worldwide from Qatar to USA to Paris. So really worldwide approach. So I had the chance in the last 10 years to see the manufacturing side of the business, 
the distribution side of the business, not only local in Switzerland, but worldwide, with retailers worldwide. Some of them didn't pay, some of them did pay, some of them closed down. So I saw a lot of things happening. I saw a lot of things going on behind the curtain, uh, which was interesting, you know, because I mean, everyone is trying their his best, even the one not paying, they're trying their best. Uh, and, and it's not easy. And I guess no one of them actually uh, wanted to do that. But the situation where the industry is at right now brought us to be in a very difficult situation overall for everyone. Brands, retailers, distributor, and at the end of the day, the customer. Now, this video about the industry, I'm going to do it once. I'm not going to, I just want to put this base with you customers, with you brands, with you uh, people from, from the industry. And then from there, we'll develop this industry further and further, step by step, by creating emotions. But to do this, it's important to self-reflect and to understand what we did well, where the industry is at, and where it can go. And obviously, you know, what we're doing well, what the industry is doing well, we don't need to speak too much about it because we're already doing it well and we might be, we, we might can do it better. But what's important for me is what is not good and what can be improved significantly in order to grow the industry by two times in very short time. Let me see in the meantime, guys. I will check some of the questions and every once in a while I will answer a question. Lord of Japan is asking me, did more customers order online at style of two during the lockdown? Yes, double, double. I mean, we are at early, early stages in terms of um, uh, style of two is at the early stages in terms of, of online um, shopping. Four pence in Switzerland. There's not many retailers doing this in Switzerland anyhow. And uh, yes, we had a big, big implementation of our eShop during this time, and it has been a great thing to see. And thanks God we were prepared since now uh, one year uh, for this. And so definitely, yes, we saw, um, we saw a big growth in the online basis, which now has gone a little bit, a little bit down again because people can go out and they can actually go in stores. Uh, maybe in their favorite stores in Geneva, in whatever wherever they are. But during the lockdown, since they there are not a lot of online stores, they had to choose from one or two that are available on the Swiss market. Now, uh, let me come back. Now, Ali is saying something very interesting. We need to teach kids to write with fountain pens. That's true. On the other end, what I find extremely interesting is that we're in a situation right now where a fountain pen is becoming more and more for the newer generation some, a luxury item, a, a statement item. Why? Because they're not forced to use it at school anymore. So for us, we we're forced to use our Pelican or Lamy or Karandash fountain pen at school. Once you would go out of the school, you were like, okay, never again a fountain pen. So of 10 people, maybe 0.5 would actually say, oh yeah, I love to write with fountain pen. Everyone else was like, okay, if I can move to rollerball or ballpoint or whatever is not a um, fountain pen, then I'm going to do it. So what I find interesting is that the newer generation is more intrigued by a fountain pen because they don't know it but they know it exists. So once they get into handwriting, they obviously want to go into something that is more exciting than a simple rollerball and ballpoint they've been using until now, which for me shows that there is a big opportunity of growth in this industry, in the industry of premium writing instruments. But to be there and growth in the industry, it's also important that the industry overall grows in mentality. And that's a very important aspect for me. Now, I like to compare things to a football team. Now, a football team that uses to win the Champions League knows how to play the Champions League and, now, and knows how to approach the Champions League. But if you start losing and if you start not participating to the Champions League for 
five, six, seven, eight, nine years in a row, then the mentality switches to, let's call it a loser mentality. Now, I'm trying to get more and more used to a winner mentality, which is not an easy thing because it's a daily challenge with yourself, but it's not easy to have a winner mentality when you're starting to lose. It requires a lot of efforts. And my feeling sometimes is that this industry has been losing for a long time, beside maybe two, three brands which have been doing good or doing okay. But you know, Gianniel used to say something well done can be done better, and that's what I believe. So uh, I see this industry as an industry that has great character, with an industry that has a great potential, but an industry that is not used to win anymore. And in order to get back at winning, in order to satisfy the customer, and I'm not talking of the single customer that might be interested in pen, because that customer is already interested, but it's about catching the mass back into handwriting and into handwriting with a nice pen or even with a fountain pen. Now, to do that, it's important to acquire another kind of mentality, a mentality that is interesting to that type of customer and a mentality that helps that customer to actually get familiar with the industry. I don't know if all of this is making sense and do not hesitate to make some questions while I'm talking. I'm going to interrupt what I'm saying and I'm going to answer to what you're saying, to, to, to your questions. Now, Lord of the Pen, I see you put another question. I'm going to answer right after to that. Now, some get, got offended to me. For example, what I'm absolutely against is the fact that most retailers sell products by discounting. Now, I'm not going to play this game. I'm not going to sell my products with a discount so I sell them. Because I think I'd rather create other opportunities and other reasons for customers or for emerging customers or for, new or for new customers to buy pens instead of going down and down and down with the price. Because that's gonna bring other retailers to match that price or to go even one down. And on the long run, I know that we're all looking after discounts every now and then, but on the long run in this industry, in the luxury industry, it's just not going to be affordable. It's simply not going to be affordable for the retailers and the brands to manage the brand or to manage their retail stores, even if online. So the perception of people working in, this, in, in the industry is the first that needs to change in order for the industry to change. Let's not forget that we are, we should be here to deliver a great experience instead of a cheaper experience. And over the last 15 years, the industry unfortunately has not evolved. I'm being very frank with you, customer, consumer, industry, okay? And I'm open to get your criticism and your ideas and thoughts because I think that's the way we can improve and go up. And for me, in 2020, in order to go up and to grow, there's got to be full transparency with the customer too, with the consumer, with the lover, with the collector. There's got to be interaction, conversation in order to grow. That's why I'm doing all of this here, is to have this interaction, to hear your opinion. And I, I can hear your opinion even after this live streaming by, by getting your direct messages and or getting your emails, getting your WhatsApps and reading out what you have to say and answer to you. Now, Lord of the Planet said, I would pay full price for a better experience at the stores. Yes, that's what 80% of the people would do. 70% of the people would do. You cannot discount an industry that is already a niche, okay? A niche industry cannot be in a discounting sphere. A niche industry needs to stay on top in order that it can keep on surviving. I can guarantee you and I can promise you that if the industry keeps on selling the products like they have been selling it the last 15 years, this industry is going to collapse pretty soon. 
We had the experiences already of two brands collapsing in the last three, four years, Omas and Delta, two amazing Italian brands, one owned by a private equity from, from, uh, from Asia and the, other, um, and the other owned by the, um, and the other family owned by, by um, several actors from the industry, you know, Marino, Ciro Matrone, etc. Great, great actors, very nice people, uh, very smart people also. Obviously, I'm not blaming them, I'm not blaming them because alone we cannot make a difference, but together we can make a difference. Which brings me also to a point that, that there's not got to be jealousy in the industry. There's got to be a willingness to share and to grow it all together in order that the pie gets bigger for everyone, including the customer. Guys, don't forget, including the customers, because emotions are a big part of our life. We know that from cars, we know that from clothes, we know that from watches. And the pen is just another accessory that can sparkle up our life. Now, I'm not going to tell you we need a premium pen. I'm not gonna, going to tell this. It's, that's not about it. If, if we want to argue this way, then we can stop right away. What I'm trying to do to say is that it brings pleasure to us. But in order to bring pleasure and to have fun there needs to be a mentality switch. Now, I repeat, we don't sell discounts. We, say, we sell high valuable items. When I see sometimes some editions that are sold out, I, I don't even exhibit it in my store, and, I, and they're already sold out. And then I see people in the industry doing certain type of discounts. You can go uh, watch after it. I mean, I, I'm doing, uh, I'm harming my business right now. Right now, I'm harming my business because I want to be intellectually correct towards anyone and let you understand that if I'm trying to deliver a certain kind of experience that is always on the improving side because we're not perfect at all, zero, zero perfect, where we're growing, growing constantly and learning from our mistakes. But if we want to keep on delivering a great experience, uh, have a nice interior design, displaying the pens like they deserve to be displayed, then we simply cannot sell products at 20, 25% discount. I'm being that clear. Now, I'm saying this because it is a problem. Now, my customer, they trust me blindly. They'll buy from me. I'm okay with that. But still, I'm not okay with delivering a product that costs them 10% more than somewhere else, for example. That's why it is very important, not that there's, there's not going to be any discount or stuff like this. I'm also not saying this. I'm, I'm trying to be reasonable. But discounts, it's the way you do discounts that make the difference. Porsche doesn't put their cars with a sticker with 100,000. No, now it's 70,000. No, they don't do that. You go at the garage, you sit down, talk one-to-one, -one, get to know each other, and then they'll put you down an offer. Okay, if we're talking premium, if we're talking low end, then we're probably um, we're talking something completely else. Then, OK, discounts left and right. But then here I'm talking about limited editions, guys, I'm talking about valuable limited editions that are not going to be available on the market anymore and are being sold with discount. OK, let's go away from the discount thematic because that's one on, you know, there's so many people who don't care about discounts because they want experience. The experience I deliver, for example, is I pay for my customer to travel to Hamburg and see the Mont Blanc manufacturer and I pay for their stay. I pay for the flight. I pay for um, for, for, for dinner. Uh, we'll go to Bassano, uh, to Monte Grappa. We can go to Tor you know, we can go wherever the customer wants to go because I want to deliver an experience where the customer is satisfied to own what he owns because we're only satisfied when a certain item has a certain meaning to us. Now, um, Lord of the Pen is saying, to my mind, the Naldi family is a very good example of how to run a successful niche business and nobody should be jazz or a rival, but doing it like them and they are 100% will be successful too. Look, I cannot say we're successful like we could be because we're growing, we're doing mistakes, we're sometimes giving too much and that's totally fine. I think we're on a path now where we see where we can go and we see where all of this 
can go. Now, I want to share this question of Lord of the Pen. How do you manage to make customers come again to your store? What's your after sales approach? Where should customer come at, at start of two? I cannot see the whole question somehow. But okay, the question is the question is great, but don't understand me wrong. I'm not trying to cherish myself. I'm trying to share my way of doing it. And I'll be more than happy to hear from any other retailer how they are doing it and how we can improve. Let's set up a table where we can sit down all together and talk about how we can improve this business for the final customer so that the final customer can enjoy it more. Now, for me, there's one very important thing. I don't push my customers, never, ever. I'll try to bring them to the right decision for them always and by doing this i try to set up a relationship that is long lasting now after sales approach is a very difficult thing okay because it's human we want to make the sale and once the after sale arrives that's where professionalism comes into and that's where we as style of Zug and me as a person can still improve a lot we're trying our best we're a small family company we're surely gonna grow that i can promise you but that's something that is extremely important and you're giving me an assist to actually talk about after sales service we cannot have brands that deliver products. I'm gonna take this away for a second. We cannot have a brand that delivers products and that then offers 16, 17, 18 weeks after sales service. A brand that does that, unless it's a brand with a 2% you know, repair cases, which doesn't exist, it's simply a brand that cannot be successful and it's simply a brand that it's not gonna uh, it's, it's not gonna make this, the customer satisfied and I had this in my store a lot of times I sold a product high priced item they wouldn't work because that can happen because high valuable items are very finely made and it can happen that they don't work I mean if you want to a, a, a watch that works then buy a quartz watch don't buy a Patek okay so that's a little bit the point now Okay, if it happens, then there the brand has to prove, the, brand, the retailer and the brand has to prove how much they care about the customers by delivering a great after-sale experience. An after-sale experience that's going to even enhance next sales because you build the trust by making a bad experience into a positive experience. That's how you build the trust. And that's how you bring a customer of being happy to being extremely satisfied and to bind it to yourself. Now, again, we can still improve a lot in that sense. We can still improve a lot in that sense. Every one of us can. But it's important that all brands take Mont Blanc as an example that brings repairs, that, that delivers repairs in six weeks. Six weeks is a re reasonable time to get to the factory, being controlled, have a good control, and then come back. Six weeks, not 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 weeks. That's too long. People are not gonna buy a pre that You know, it's gonna happen with some car brands, you know, where you buy and you spend the money, and at the end of the day, the car leaves you on the road every once in a while, okay? That's why Porsche sells that well, because those cars work, and because mostly the after sales service, if they don't work, is at a very high level. Let's not forget, it's the most difficult thing to have a, a very good after sales service. It's a very difficult thing because there's a gap between what the customer expects and what the brand delivers and, and, and what is reasonable for the brand. And that's about the communication from the brand toward uh, the customer. Now, Another point I want to mention, leaving this now by side, let me see if there was another interesting point. Now, you also asked me, Lord of the Pen, why should customer come at Style of Zug? So I'll take my uh, example. Customer should come at Style of Zug because of the whole approach they get 
from the store. When you walk in my store, you have a certain type of interior design. You, you, you will be welcomed in a certain type of way by me of one or one of our employees. Uh, you will get a very good espresso from a rocket espresso machine. You will have pens displayed in a certain way. Uh, you will have a certain type of pens there displayed that you might not be able to see in many other stores around the world. And that's the re and, and, and possibly you will have a great sales, um, you know, we will advise you very well and you go out of the store by saying I picked and I had exactly what I wanted to have. Okay, so it's very important to also have the right products in stock available for the customer to test and see. Without forgetting that online and on land, they melt each other. Okay, Amazon has started online and they're starting to make physical stores because the two worlds, they belong together. The two worlds belong together. There is online that is like a catalog that is a place where people during 24 seven can go on and you know discover this place. See, that's why we are working right now on our 2.0 website with the hope of um, having a website that gives an even better customer experience and where a customer has all information from A to Z to buy a pen. But still, if he still wants to try it, he still has the chance to come at Style of Took, in Took, or there will be other ways to get him the pen in order for him to try it. Okay, there's no um, limits to the service we can offer to the customers and as long as it's reasonable and as long as it's funny, because let's not forget that, um, that it, it should all make sense, because if it doesn't make sense, it's not a business anymore and we can stop. Now, I want to come back to the point of creating emotions. Creating emotions is key right now. Again, I'm going to be very clear and very try in this and even if customers are listening right now i don't know if it makes sense for you to listen but here's where the customer that might be interested in pens are that love beautiful things and, might, and that might spend the money and they have a lot of these customers and a lot are here listening right now okay driving big cars having big watches on their wrist wearing Expensive suits and never own the pen. Okay, they're here. Never own the pen. Big car, I repeat, big car, I mean uh, Maserati, I mean Ferrari, Porsche 911, Rolls Royce. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, we're in Sug. That's how it is here. We have customers that drive this type of cars. Okay, and they're here and they own cars and they own suits and they own watches and they own art and they own homes but they don't have a pen. Why? Because the pen industry has always been talking to a handful of people over here that are looking for prices, not for products. Some of them are, you know, some of them got into pens somehow and they're not looking for products. They're only looking for prices. They're, they, 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 they're not interested into beautiful things, you know? So it's very restricted the quantity of sales that can be generated with this same amount of customers, while there is another complete new world here of customers only waiting to hear and understand about pens and about fountain pens. And I'm saying this because I proved it. I proved it by having customers which were spending a lot of money on suits with Amarcore, with my brand, with our brand Amarcore, Karen and I, that were buying watches and they were simply not caring about pens. But why? Because nobody was speaking to them in a way they could understand. Once I took them one, two, three times and then I took them to Hamburg or I took them to another manufacturer visit and they discovered the world and they discovered the beauty of these items and how much emotion and know-how and engineering there is behind this item, a whole new world opened for these customers, okay? A world that is way less expensive than cars, way less expensive than watches, but gives you at least the same kind of satisfaction. And I have discussed this with people 
who never ever bought a pen from me, even if they were in my store every week for suits. So it's all about the emotions we can create into the customer. Because the customer, the consumer, you guys, are looking for something that makes sense for you. And if all of us, the brands, the retailers, the distributors, and some are doing a great job, I'm not saying everyone is doing a bad job at all, but 80%, 90% is doing a terrible job, bad. Now, let's, let, let me read. You're on fire uh, for the subject, and that's what some of our partners are missing, whether manufacturer, dealer, or distributor. How should the consumer be able to catch the fire? Well, it's simple. About, it's about giving them the fire. And how? There's many ways of doing it, and you, Autohut, you guys are doing a great job. It's by working with pen influencer, let's call them pen influencer, by having the right kind of uh, visual brand identity approach toward the outside, where a pen is not only seen as a boring writing tool uh, used by a grandfather or an old lawyer, with all respect to grandfathers and lawyers, obviously, but as a cool item to carry with you. I mean, how are you gonna have a Patek on your wrist and an expensive watch and not have a cool pen with you? Something is missing, bro. So it's only about let them discover, let them fall in love with this. And we can do that. Every one of us can do that. You know, that's the point. We have to be the change we want to see in the industry in this case, like Mahatma Gandhi used to say, we have to be the change we want to see in the industry. And in order to be a change, we got to express the pen in a way that this kind of customers catches the message. Okay, it's, it's easy. It's not difficult. We just got to do it. I mean, I can do it with my reach and I'm going to try to hire and, and, and broaden my reach. But I see a lot of retailers, YouTubers, and, and, and pages, Instagram pages, blogs, whatever, that are simply like they are showing the pen like if it was the most dry thing on earth. Guys, it's a luxury item. Come on. How nerd and how intellectually incorrect do we want to be by not realizing that this is a luxury item, that it is completely nonsense, and that the only reason why somebody should be buying a pen is pure emotion. It's everything about how it makes you feel, guys. And I was, I grew up in pens. I grew up in expensive watches. I'm the, the guy who can be the least like um, impressed by these kind of things. But still, I understand the emotion that it delivers to me. And it's not, it's not always gotta be expensive, let's not forget this. And I love the democratic part of a luxury item. I love the idea of the democratic part of a luxury item. But let's not forget that it's really, really, really about bringing it over to the customer, not keeping it for ourselves, bringing it over to the customer. Let the customer come in. Let's have, let's serve him a good glass of whiskey of a very good, whiskey, let's serve him a great bottle of wine, let's organize a nice event with customer where it's not only about pens, but maybe it's also about wine, maybe it's about interior design, maybe it's connected to a car producer like Graf did with Bentley now. So it's important that the pen is connected to other kind of worlds by not forgetting that this has its own world. This item cannot be sold in a watch store. It cannot be sold in a watch store because a watch store will never understand this item. This item deserves its own space in a boutique so that it's being displayed, showed, explained, tested with professionalism, with people that understand pens. But if we keep on being, I'm gonna say it like this, nerd on the way how we show pens, then we'll never get a result. We'll never approach a customer that doesn't want to be approached in a nerdy way, a customer that wants to be approached in an emotional way. That's where the most people, that's how the most people want to be approached, is emotionally, you know? It's like when you walk in a store, you see something, and you're like, I'm just gonna buy it. 
It's emotion. And that's what we have to build. And we can do that with Instagram. We have so many tools to build this emotion. Um, we have Instagram, we have videography, uh, we can do YouTube reviews that you know are more than just a webcam review, but but really go into into discovering the beauty. I mean, go go watch some of go go watch some of the uh, YouTube channels for watches. Go watch Swiss Watch Gang. Go watch what kind of content this guy delivers for this luxury item. That's how your perception of the product grows. It's because the product is put in, his, in the right environment, is shot the right way with the right light, and this brings the product out to the people and lets the people understand how valuable, beautiful, and how much of a must-have it is. If we keep on saying, hey, this is a pen, you can write with it, and you can sign, and, and you know, the nib, and the gold, and the feed, and guys, this is next step. The feed, the, 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 the nib, everything. This is next step. This becomes interesting once they enter the world. So now we got to build the gates and then open them. Build the gates. Gates that customer that don't know pens come out and say, whoa, what a gate. And then we open the gate. Uh, we'll leave it open. We'll, we'll, close it, we'll close it just so that I can see it. And then we open the gate and the consumer can walk in and discover it. And the, what, I, what I try to do, obviously with YouTube reviews, obviously with Instagram content, with this live streaming, guys, I'm, I'm not going to earn a single penny from this live streaming. I'm not going to earn a single penny from most of the YouTube reviews I'm doing right now. I'm not going to earn a penny of building so many new customers from scratch because a lot of those customers are going to buy in mobile boutiques in other countries too. I just had a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, which I love and, and I'm totally okay with it, which bought a 3,000 franc Mont Blanc in a Mont Blanc boutique in another country. He would have never bought it one year ago, 12 months ago. You can ask him. He's probably even watching. He greeted me earlier before. I'm not earning a penny from that, but I'm happy. I'm happy because he's excited about the product, because he sees the beauty behind the product. So I've written this here. Stop minding only about your own garden. I've written some influencers and I've written to some retailers about having a phone call, a simple phone call, where we could discuss about the situation in the industry and what we can do. On one end, I didn't get a reply. Okay, loser, loser me. <laughs> On the other end, I heard, oh, I'm too busy right now. Oh yeah, like, I'm not busy. It's just people don't want to change. And as long as they're not gonna self-reflect and understand that in order to grow, we need to come together and build this together, the industry is not gonna grow. And I repeat, in order to do that, we cannot mind our own garden. I've built so many things that are so expensive and time consuming. And I wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. and I work until night. And I never stop working in my mind because I wake up during the night with anxious, being anxious of certain things, positively anxious, you know, being afraid that some things are not going to work out. Because we're looking at the bigger picture here. We got, we're looking about the, where, to, to a picture where everyone is going to have more out of it. More fun. More innovation from the brands. Because don't forget that if we grow this industry, the brands are going to be able to afford innovation. In nibs making, for example. You know, it, doesn't, it takes two engineers for one year to develop a nib. I mean, how much can you can cost that? How much can it cost? A few hundred thousand? Oh, this is out of this world in this industry. A few hundred thousand, just like this, lost out of this world. While it would be exactly what needs to be done in order to go one step further, one step further, innovate, use new materials, uh, use uh, new techniques, new engineering, new 
materialization on pens, on nibs, on feeds. There's so much things we can still do, so many things to be discovered, guys. There's so many things that still need to be discovered and we're here sleeping, always trying to catch the same customer once it's that retailer and then the other time it's that retailer because he did 1% more discount and then the other guy decides he's gonna do 40% discount during one week. I mean, how can you survive? How can you make money that helps you to develop your business further and create a better sales experience with the customer? That's my very, very big question. Don't forget to ask me anything you want, guys. Huh? So I think, let me come back to the COVID situation. The COVID situation has brought us in big danger, a lot of retailer. On the other end, big crises bring big opportunities, huge opportunities. And that's what I'm personally looking for. I'm looking exactly for those opportunities arising and coming. And that's why this is the moment we have to focus on growth. Without forgetting that winning helps winning, okay? In Italian, we say vincere aiuta vincere. So the more we're going to see this industry grow, the more fun it's going to be and the more things are going to be developed and the more sense we will see. But in order to start winning, we need to adapt a winner mentality before we even start winning. That's how it is. Because if we don't adapt this winner mentality like Michael Jordan has, like Cristiano Ronaldo has, like Apple has, like Rolex has, like Montblanc has, then we're gonna stay stuck. We're gonna stay stuck. Or maybe we're gonna start winning a little bit and then we're gonna start losing. And when we, once we start losing, boom, we're out of the game. Because let's not forget that growing the industry is gonna require a lot of efforts, is gonna require a lot of, um, you know, of losing. Because you, you win or you learn. I mean, by losing, we learn. And if we learn, we can grow three steps more than what we thought we could grow the day before because we learned and from that learning we can grow even more and all of this came up very like as an instinct because i was discussing on facebook on a group where they would post like oh uh, now you have the chance to have 20 percent on this edition and i was like guys you're offering 20 percent discount on a limited edition sold out, not available in the market anymore, which in a few years is going to be worth double because this industry is going to grow and the promise is going to grow because we're going to grow it all together. And I said, how can you? You don't deserve to have those fan and to sell those fan because you're not able to sell them. If after nine years you still have you still got them in stock and you didn't manage to have one customer and you did him a silent discount under the table, which doesn't disrupt the whole market online. And I'm like, why are you, you even carrying the brand? Why are you even carrying the products? Doing this takes away credibility from the brand, from the product, from retailers that are doing a terrific job, that are doing a ve the very difficult job of keeping the writing instruments industry up here. And I got pretty much insulted by a lot of people where they were saying, oh, you should mind your own business. You should not, not, I have to say, I, I didn't get insulted by the person who posted this, which was somehow even um, agreeing with me and even other retailers were agreeing with me. But the customer, the, some customer was telling me what, what do you think you are? Do you think that only your opinion counts? Uh, I'll always take a discount over, uh, you know, overrated uh, prices. Exper I'm like, guys, what are we talking about? These brands are going to die if, and these retailers are going to die if they keep on doing this, count, this kind of discounts. It's just that. They're going to die. And if they die, brands keep on dying and everyone will die except of two, three brands, gonna remain on the, pro on the market, gonna be niche, uh, they're gonna maybe share more of the market, so these three, four brands are gonna have more of the market, some 
brands are going to decide to retire from the premium industry and only focus on, you know, uh, coloring and, uh, and uh, pencils and so on. So my point here is that if we want to keep this beautiful industry, that is a, an industry full of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, aspects, a, an international industry where the know-how comes from Italy, the know-how comes from Japan, from Germany, from France, from, from a lot of place, uh, places, then we all got to give something back to the industry and help it to grow. Go at your local dealer. Don't ask for a discount if possible. Or just, you know, make sure you don't tell it too much left and right. Try to understand that if we want to keep this industry, we need to adapt another mentality, all of us. And I'm talking here obviously about uh, pen collectors that are used to big discounts or and are used to, to find the, the, the biggest bargain. They, they, they will keep on doing it this way and that's fine for me. I'm not saying I'm doing 0% discount policy. I'm not saying this at all. What I'm saying is that beside a few discontinuing products that are not going to be available on the market anymore, um, I'm, I'm trying not to put any uh, discounts on, uh, on pens. I'm not putting any discount on pens that are in collection that are being, are, that are going to be sold out. I'm not putting them on discount. Unless the customer comes in my store, we'll talk, they pay, and then that's another story. We also we shouldn't be stupid, you know, and act like we would have a 0% discount policy because that's not the point. The point is how it's done. It's going to be done with class. It's going to be done. It's going to be done with class. That's what it is. It's going to be done with class and not like a, a big bazaar uh, where uh, this guy is offering this price and this guy is offering this price. And then you have eBay and then you have Amazon and then you have this limited edition on eBay. And that guy is offering at this price because he bought six and the brand delivered six pieces while I only got two pieces of it. Come on. That's also about the brand. The brand has to give an equal amount of products to retailers that deserve to have those pieces, okay? To retailers that are actually delivering value to the brand and not only orders, because orders is not the value on, on the long run. Orders and cash is only a value on the short run and the, the world is full of cash. What the world is not full is of great ideas and the world is not full of great intentions. And people and retailers with the right intentions, which are doing a great work to preserve this industry and know how to sell a luxury or a limited edition pen, that's the retailers that should get the limited edition pens because they know how to sell it. And guys, I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm afraid about my business. I'm not saying that, I'm, you know, I'm also not going to say we're in the best waters because we're, we are investing way over what we're generating because I believe in what we're doing. I believe in what we're doing and that's why I'm investing the money because I'm sure that tomorrow it's going to come back 10 times. But still, right now, I'm investing 10 times and I'm not even taking advantage of a lot of the things I'm doing, which you might not even know that I am behind those projects. But I brought my customers to other retailers here in Switzerland to buy a platinum pen. I have customers who bought Graphen Faber Castells because I did three videos in a row in the US and other countries. I have people who bought Mont Blancs at the Mont Blanc boutique because I communicated on them, they watched my videos, and then they went to the, to the boutique near them. And they didn't order for me. I don't care. I'm happy if they order for me, because at least my work is worth, but I'm also happy if they just buy it, because that's growing the business. It's growing the overall business. It's growing a business that is gonna help to go up and up and up and up. Now, these were, these were some of my points. I see there is only four viewers right now because, you know, I kept it very, very long. I know I've, I have been extremely long in all of my uh, topic. I hope I haven't been too, uh, I hope I haven't been too, too, too heavy. 
I would love to see more videos to review pens. Yes, I'm surely gonna review more and more pens, even if I think there is a lot of people out there reviewing pens right now, so, but still, I'm gonna definitely review it, but maybe just in a different way than the, uh, everyone else does. I'm not gonna do too much nip testing and all of these things. Um, again, I'm gonna be more the guy who tries to bring over the emotion of the product and the concept behind the product and what were the ideas behind the product, and then there's surely gonna be other people who might go deeper into the technical part. Um, again, guys, I hope this wasn't too heavy. This, uh, this whole thing wasn't too heavy. This was my idea, my feedback, uh, and uh, what I think about uh, the situation of the industry. I want to finish by saying that I really, really believe that there is a huge potential in this industry. I think that there is a potential that more people with high know-how in marketing, in beauty, in how to create amazing companies will enter the uh, industry. I think there is a huge opportunity that there's gonna be more happening in this industry. But don't forget guys, we're all part of the growth. We can all grow this industry all together by speaking about uh, pens with our friends, sharing pens on Instagram in a tasteful, aesthetically tasteful way and check how the watch industry does it, okay? Check how they speak about pens and let's take these beautiful luxury industries as an example in order to understand how we can do better in pens, how we can not only mind our own garden but how we can do more so that everyone has more of pens. Don't forget, we want to bring in people in the industry that don't, don't know pens yet, okay? And to do this, we got to give them our pens, let them try, and just, uh, explain them. And you don't need to be a retailer to do that. You can be a consumer, a collector, a lover, a patron of art of this industry, and you simply explain instead of saying, oh, I would never give my front of pen to anyone. Because... Come on, man. I mean, what are you? Give it. Explain it. Tell him. Let him understand, you know, when, when I give a fountain pen to someone, I tell him, just be careful because it's a fountain pen. Just saying this, the, the guy looks at the pen and says, oh, it's a long time I haven't written with a fountain pen. But it also happened that once I didn't say nothing and he just pulled it off and destroyed the nib. Okay, it happened. It happened, but it's, it was my fault. I didn't say what it is, you know, if I let someone drive a Ferrari without telling him it's a Ferrari, he's maybe gonna drive it like it's a, it's a Fiat Uno, you know? So uh, it's all about how we communicate. So let's share this passion. Let's people share, uh, let, let us share the item. Let them understand and show them with love, with emotion, with passion, what's behind a pen, what makes a pen so valuable, you know? Whether it's a Mont Blanc, a Montegrappa, a, a Aurora, a, um, a Visconti, a Namiki, a Sailors, there is so much, there is so much we can say about this industry because it's such an international industry. We have brands from Hiroshima, from Tokyo. We have brands that are uh, in Paris. We have brands that are in Torino, in Firenze, in Bassano del Grappa, in Hamburg. Uh, so many manufacturers, so many, so much know-how from different countries, from different people that see, uh, that look at this product in a completely different way than the other country. And that's so different than an industry like the watch industry that is mainly Swiss. So that's where I see the big potential and the big growth we can have in pens. Guys, this was it. Sorry for my long talking. Sandra is obviously gonna say I talk way too much and it's totally true. I hoped I would have a little bit more interaction, but probably I hope that uh, what I said was interesting, I will post this video on IGTV. I'll please ask you to share it, to show it to other people that don't know the industry yet or that, or that know the industry. Share it with brands, share it with 
uh, retailers, tag retailers, tag uh, brands, please, because it's not about Samuel Naldi a style of tug. It's just about Samuel Naldi trying to promote an industry so that it can grow for everyone. So please share this video once I put it on IGTV. Show it to everyone else that is um, that is. Uh, that, that is a pen aficionado and let's try to change our mentality to have a winning mentality just as Real Madrid has just as Michael Jordan used to have you know and to go back winning and hire the turnover I'm gonna finish with this one statistic the watch industry generates 50 billion turnover with 80% being done by the Swiss made, but by Swiss made, well, Swiss made watches. The pen industry reaches around 1 billion. So the watch industry is 50 times bigger than the pen industry. A watch that you have, you have the time on your Apple, okay? So let's not forget that this industry is at year zero. We're at zero right now. Questo è l'anno zero. This is anno zero. We can grow it from here on. We are nowhere yet. The brands that you know are not doing enough turnover yet. I can guarantee you that. They could do 10 times and still be a small company. Okay? So that's why I'm saying we need to grow. It's based on, on statistics and it's based on numbers. I didn't want to be even more cold and ice than, than uh, I have been in this video, but I want you to understand that this industry is not yet, nowhere yet. I want you to understand that there is brands in the watch industry doing six times than the whole industry of pens, including the biggest brand, which is doing a great job. This industry only exists because there is Mont Blanc doing such a great job in the industry. That's point I'm not going to discuss with any CEO and business owner of pens out in the world, okay? But let's not forget we're at Anno Zero and we can grow a lot and it can be a lot of fun. Thank you very much, guys. Do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Share this video. Please tag brands, retailers, distributors under this video as soon as it's uh, uh, on IGTV. Thank you very much for taking your time and watching. I hope you liked it. Please share your feedback. Criticize me. I'm waiting for it. I'm happy to hear. I want simply that we start discussions on how to grow. And I want to hear also from you as a consumer, what do you expect from this industry? See you soon, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in and stay tuned because there's a lot of content coming in the next weeks.